You go to the game, buy a ticket, then find your seat. Except for the view it provides, they're all the same, right? Well, not all. Here are a few assigned viewing markers, most of which we seem to take for granted, that have special moments and meetings all to their own. Fenway Park, the oldest stadium in Major League Baseball, has seen its share of memorable home runs. On June 9, 1946, one of the home team's most prolific sluggers, Ted Williams, hit a shot off of Detroit's Fred Hutchinson that traveled a reported 502 feet, the farthest measured shot in Boston history. It didn't land in a row of actual seats, though. At the time, the section was comprised of just bleachers. Chairback seats were installed in the late 70s, and the famous mark was commemorated by painting the seat where the shot landed in red. The surrounding seats are all in green. The hit occurred during the second of a doubleheader played between the Red Sox and Tigers. Williams crushed the Mammoth Blast in the first inning and had already hit one out in the first game. Boston won both of the day's contests. Known in the 1940s as the Lower Bleachers, you can spot the marker from just about anywhere in Fenway. But for an up-close look, Section 42, Row 37, Seat 21 is the magic spot. Willie Stargell was already a superstar when his Pirates visited Olympic Stadium to take on the Montreal Expos on May 20, 1978. In his second home run of the game against Wayne Twitchell, he delivered a shot to the right field's upper deck some 535 feet away. The Montreal club painted the seat where the ball landed, once part of a Red Sea, in Pirates gold and numbered it 8, all in tribute to the Pittsburgh legend. Though Major League Baseball has since to be played in Stade Olympique, the seat and its lore still live on. It can be viewed at the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame in Ontario. Stargell's feat that day was no fluke. He also hit the longest home runs in the history of Dodger Stadium, Three Rivers Stadium, and Veterans Stadium. Kirby Puckett, the name and the player both unforgettable. The twin center fielder added another amazing moment in his career on October 26, 1991. You might remember the game. It was the sixth of seven in one of the greatest World Series in modern history, five of the seven contests being decided by just one run. Leading off the bottom of the 11th inning in a tied game against the Braves' Charlie Liebrandt, Puckett hit a memorable blast that prompted Jack Buck to scream, We'll see you tomorrow night! above the clamor of hanky-waving fans who went ballistic once the bat made contact with the helpless and hopeless ball. The original blue seat where the ball landed was removed and put into storage. A new seat, painted gold and renumbered 34, took its rightful place back in section 101, row 5, seat 27 at the Metrodome, where it remained even through the stadium's demolition. The original is now part of a display at Target Field, where visitors can take photos next to, but not allowed to sit in. Let's stay in the Gopher State, but take you back a ways to June 3, 1967, and another legendary figure in Twin Cities baseball. Harmon Killebrew, then playing home games in Metropolitan Stadium, crushed the longest ball hit in franchise history, no matter ballpark. The green seat where his fourth inning homer off Angels Lou Burdett landed some 522 feet away was painted in honor of the magnificent feat. A home plate shaped marker is cemented in Minnesota's famed Mall of America and shows the original's position at the old ballpark. Even cooler than that, the seat that eventually stopped Harmon's home run ball from continuing is still hanging around. Literally. The chair is suspended where it would be located if the stadium stood today, on a wall next to the mall's log chute ride. Buck O'Neill is a most revered figure in Kansas City baseball history, playing and coaching in the Monarchs organization from 1938 to 1955. The red legacy seat in Kauffman Stadium is the exact one Buck sat in for so many of the Royals games he attended and scouted. But it's not for individual game sale. Instead, it's given as an honor to recipients who are recognized for their community work. Once the Negro League he had played for had folded, O'Neill became a scout for future Major League Baseball talent, started a barnstorming tour, and helped to create the Negro League's Baseball Museum, also in Kansas City. His widespread calls to action about teammates of the past culminated in his accepting many Negro League players into induction in Cooperstown's Hall of Fame. Beginning in 2007, the honored seat was found in Section 101, Row C, Seat 1. After renovations which concluded in 2009, the same location is now assigned to Section 127, Row C, 
seat nine. It just goes to show, next time you attend a game, keep that ticket stub. You never know what memorable event might happen to the seat you're in.